I'm Brad Rodriguez from Fix This, Build That, and today I'm gonna to show you how I made my first pin on the lathe. I also didn't use a whole ton of fancy accessories. Stay tuned, I'll show you exactly how I did it. Pin tricks. This is day four of my six days of beginner wood turning video series. I'm launching a new video each day of a turning project any beginner can make. This is my first time making most of these projects, so you'll see some mistakes I made and things that I learned. I'll have a link in the description to the playlist for all six videos so you can check out the whole series. Now let's get turning. This is actually the first time I've ever made a pin, and I'll be making a slimline style. It comes in a kit that's available in a variety of finishes like chrome, gold, black, or satin nickel like the one that I'm using. The kit includes everything you'll need to assemble the pin, except for the wood. When you lay it all out, you have a pin cap that holds the clip, a center ring, a twist mechanism, an ink cartridge, the pin tip, and the lower and upper tubes for the wood. The nice thing about pins is you don't need much to turn them. Just a pin mandrel, drill bit, and bushings. These are the guides used to size the ends of the wood that you're turning so that they'll have a flush fit with the pin hardware. The bushings slide onto the pin mandrel on both ends of each tube and are tightened down with a nut to hold the work in place while turning. There are other accessories for pin turning you may see people use, but you can do it all with these three specialty items and some other shop tools. I'm using a leftover piece of walnut as the blank since I didn't want to ruin a nice blank on my first go at pin turning. I laid out the tubes and I marked the blank a little oversized for each tube. I also drew a mark across the cut line in the middle so that I could put the halves back together in the same grain orientation. You can cut the blanks a variety of different ways, but I used my crosscut sled on the table saw to do it and cut the blank along the layout lines. Cutting with a bandsaw or handsaw is also a good option here. The next step is to drill the holes for the tubes. I put the 7mm bit into my drill press and clamped a right angle block to the table to act as a guide. There are a ton of different ways to drill this centered hole and even some fancy vices to hold the pin, but this did the job for me. The only problem is that the throw on my drill press is too short to go all the way through the blank. So I had to finish off the hole with a hand drill. And not the most elegant of solutions, but again, it works. You can also drill the holes for the pins right on the lathe, but you're going to need several more accessories for that to do it. With the holes prepared, I could glue the tubes in. At first, I roughed up each tube with sandpaper to give the glue something to grab onto that brass. Then I grabbed my CA glue, which I promptly found out was totally clogged, but luckily CA glue is one thing I have a ton of, so I switched out to a different bottle and put a generous amount on the tube. I pushed the tube into the blank, and I'm not sure what I thought was going to happen here, like a spider was going to jump out or something, because I was definitely taking my time putting this one in. But on the second one, I remembered I was supposed to do the twisting of the tube, and I realized I didn't need to be so gingerly with it. Now while the blanks are drying, here's a sneak peek of Day 5's project. I'm staying with the pin theme, but I'm turning a wider single piece pin. I'm also using a new to me exotic wood, Bacote. Now make sure that you check the description or the end of the video for a link to the six days of beginner wood turning playlist. All right, back to the project. With the blanks dry, I went to my sander to trim the tubes. Now you basically just want to remove enough wood until the brass tubes start showing. They make barrel reamers and trimmers that'll do this for you, but I found that a 90 degree jig on the sander works great and I also already have this tool in my shop. You'll know you've gone far enough when you see the shiny brass at the end of the blank. And if you do use this method, a straight hole for the tubes that's parallel to the edges is crucial. With the blank squared up on the ends, I went back to the mandrel. For a two-piece kit like this, I removed the adjustable stop nut to use the full mandrel shaft. I put the bushings and the blanks on like I showed before, lining up the black lines that I had drawn for the orientation of the grain. Then I tightened down the nut to lock everything in place. I took the mandrel to the lathe and I put it in the headstock and then brought the tailstock in with a live center to add support to the other end. With a slimline kit, you really have to take off a lot of material to get the blank down to size. I did all the roughing and final turning with a circle cutter carbide tool. Now the idea is just to get down as close to the bushing as possible without touching them and then finish it off with sandpaper. And I actually left a little more than I needed to and I'm gonna go closer next time. The shape of the blank between the bushings is really up to you, but I went with a very slight bulge in the middle tapering off towards the ends. I moved away the tool rest and then started with 150 grit and worked my way up to 600 grit sanding strips. 
In between grits, I sanded with the grain to get rid of any radial sanding marks. Like other things, there's a ton of different ways to finish the pins, but I used my trusty old wood turner's finish and applied a heavy coat and then wiped with the grain. After evening everything out, I turned the lathe on to help the finish dry faster so I could apply some more coats. I did five total coats and I sanded in between each one with 1800, 2400, and 3200 micro mesh sanding pads. And these are great little sanding pads. I'll have a link below in the description to this and all the materials that I used today. After the final coat, I sanded the full progression of the micro mesh all the way up to 12,000. I backed off the tailstock, removed the finished pin upper and lower tubes from the mandrel, and then took it back to the bench for assembly. And they make special tools to assemble pins, which I'm sure work great, but I don't have one of those either. So I've seen people use bench vices, which I also don't have, so I'm just using one of my jet parallel clamps to do the job. I started by pressing the tip into the lower tube of the pin. Just make sure everything is aligned properly, and go slowly if you're using a vise or a clamp. Next, I put the twist mechanism on the back of the lower tube and pressed it in. There's a little indentation ring on the body of it, and you just press it in until it's flush with the wood. The cap goes into the top of the upper tube and holds the pin clip in place. This one is slightly trickier because the cap is rounded and not flush, but again, just go slow here and make any adjustments if you see it going askew. To finish the assembly, the center ring slides down over the twist mechanism. The ink cartridge then gets screwed into the pin. Then the upper tube slides down over the twist mechanism to complete the look. Now, everything worked and I just finished my first pin. These pin kits are less than $5. They make perfect gifts and are quick and easy to make. So this is an excellent beginner lathe project. I wanna give a big thank you to Jet Woodworking for sponsoring today's video. There's a link down below in the description where you can check out all the information on the Jet 1221 variable speed lathe that I used in today's project. All right, so that was day four of my six days of beginner wood turning projects. The link to the playlist is right over here as always, as well as down in the description, go check it out. If you're not subscribed to the channel, I'd love to have you as part of the team. And until next time guys, get out there and build something awesome.